Washington State, also known as the Evergreen State, is a place where beauty and opportunity converge. From the towering peaks of the Cascade Mountains to the rolling hills of the Palouse, this state boasts some of the most breathtaking natural landscapes in the country. But it's not just the scenery that draws people to Washington. The state is also home to a thriving economy and a diverse range of industries, from technology and aerospace to agriculture and fishing. For those seeking employment, Washington offers a wealth of opportunities. With a strong job market and a minimum wage that's among the highest in the country, workers in this state have the potential to earn a comfortable living and build a fulfilling career. And when it comes to quality of life, few places can match what Washington has to offer. Whether you're a lover of the great outdoors, a foodie looking to explore new culinary delights, or a culture vulture seeking out world-class museums and galleries, this state has something for everyone. In this documentary, students in Washington State have worked together to interview folks walking down many different career paths. They will share what they know with us, and through that, we will all come to see the power and beauty of Washington State. What better place to begin than with the Washington State Ferry System? Washington State Ferries have been around since June 1, 1951. For over 70 years, the ferries have been helping to get people where they want to go. Whether you're on your way to Anacortes, Edmonds, Seattle, the San Juan Islands, among many other places, the Washington State Ferry System has you covered. In order to learn more about Washington State Ferries, one expert will help to share all that they know. Andy Engham is what's known as an able body, which means he is a firefighter, drives the ferry, rescues people if necessary, and he also loads the ferry and helps to direct traffic. Andy Engham is an able body and has been in the ferry system for many years. In the ferry system, all jobs are based on seniority. The higher the seniority you have, the better position you have on the ferry. In the Washington State Ferry System, it can take a lot of time and effort to become a captain or a mate, and one shouldn't be surprised that this is a competitive workplace, because it is the Washington State Ferry System after all. When asked what he likes most about his job, Andy Engham said the view when you're on the boat is beautiful and you sometimes see killer whales once a week at a certain time of year. You even get to do firefighter training. Andy's favorite path is the filmy run because it's a beautiful path, but they're not doing it right now and he thinks they're not going to do it again. Next, Andy discussed some things that most people in the state might not know about his job. That you're a firefighter, that you're, you know, the person that's going to help try to save the drowning person in the water. A lot of people don't understand that. Andy says that in this job, you always have to be on time or else you'll make hundreds of people late and then the ferry can't sail. If you are late a few times in a row, you can lose your job. That's how important this job is. Without the ferries getting to places on time, people aren't either. And that can cause a whole lot of problems. It took almost 10 years for Andy to get this specific job. You start off basically like a janitor in the cabin, and the more years you work there, the better the shifts you get. Right now, they bid on their shift on the first day of the year, and Andy really loves working for the Washington State Ferries. We thank all the ferry workers for helping us get from place to place in beautiful Washington State. And now, onto a team you might know quite well. If you've ever been to Washington State, then you'll know that Washingtonians love their sports, and they absolutely love their sounders. Seattle Sounders FC is a professional soccer team based in Seattle and is one of the most successful franchises in Major League Soccer history. Founded in 2007, the Sounders have established themselves as a dominant force in North American soccer, winning numerous MLS Cups, Supporters' Shields, and U.S. Open Cups. The team's passionate and dedicated fan base creates an electric atmosphere at home games, making the Sounders one of the most exciting teams to watch in the league. Andy Rose is a former professional soccer player and current assistant coach for the Seattle Sounders FC in Major League Soccer. Rose played as a midfielder for the Sounders from 2016 to 2020 before retiring and joining the coaching staff. As an assistant coach, Rose brings his experience as a player and his knowledge of the Sounders system to help develop the team's young talent and support the head coach in game preparation and strategy. When it comes to one of the favorite parts of his job, Andy Rose said that he loves connecting to all the players and understanding what selfless role being a coach really is. Andy shared with us that the Seattle Sounders became a team in 1994 and have been a very successful team winning the U.S. Open Cup four times. They are an incredibly competitive team and that is thanks to their hard work, dedication, grit, and loyal fan base. A couple other facts that Andy Rose shared with us is that he feels coaching is a 24-7 job, and he also shared that he played with the Seattle Sounders for four years early in his playing career. Now you might be wondering why they are called the Seattle Sounders. 
Of the more than 14,500 votes received in choosing the new team name, 49% of the votes included some form of the name Sounders. Finally, Andy Rose opened up to us and shared about his experience with having type 1 diabetes. How does this diagnosis affect your life and career? Yeah, that was a huge moment for me because it com came completely out of the blue. Um, it really taught me a lot about myself, um, about perseverance. You know, I was really determined to make sure it didn't stop my playing career. And I, I really wanted to make sure I could inspire others by maybe performing even better than I ever had before. Um, so I continued playing after that diagnosis for another five years. and played some of the best soccer of my career and it, it, I was really proud of the fact that it never got in my way or never stood in my way and uh, I can honestly say it's never stopped me from from sort of achieving any of my dreams so I'm very proud of that. We thank the Seattle Sounders for always giving the state of Washington excitement and hope and we thank Andy Rose for all he does for such a wonderful team. And now let's fly over to one of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the world. For this part of the documentary, we are going to talk to a production engineer that works at Boeing. Boeing is a global aerospace company that has played a significant role in the economy and culture of Washington State for over a century. Founded in Seattle in 1916, the company has been a leader in the aviation industry, designing and building some of the most iconic and innovative airplanes in history. The Boeing location we are going to be talking about is in Mukilteo. The first question we asked Matt was, what does he do in his job? He said that in his job as a production engineer, he really is a tool planner. A tool planner is a tooling manufacturing engineer. What he does is he reviews tooling costs for Boeing, and he does that for all of the suppliers around the world. Specifically, he looks at tooling costs to make sure that Boeing doesn't spend more money than they need to. He also does what Boeing calls a tooling find, and that is when an airplane can't fly. It's important for that airplane to get back up and running, so he helps find the tools and parts that they need to get the plane in the air. We also asked Matt what his favorite thing is about his job, and he replied that he loves saving money for Boeing. Last year, he saved about $20 million for the company. He also loves getting the airplanes back in the air when it's been down for a long time. We also asked him some things that people might not know about Boeing, and he said that some people might not know that the tools they use to make the airplanes can be as big as a car or as small as a phone. Also that each tool can be up to half a million dollars. He was also able to take a trip to Mexico to see how a tool was being used, and he was there to make suggestions about how to use the tool for the supplier to assist using that tool. So his job is worldwide, and there are some people that might not know that. The next thing we asked is why Boeing is important for the state of Washington, and here's what he said. Well, my job is important for the state of Washington because Boeing has been in the state of Washington for many years since its inception. Uh, the Boeing company started making furniture, believe it or not, back in the early 1900s. And then in World War One was when they transitioned over to making airplanes and airplane parts. So we are a part, this company is a part of state history and is very important for us to remain here as just in the Everett facility alone where I currently am working, there's over 30,000 people that work here. So if Boeing were to leave our state, that would be a very large impact to many families. Finally, we asked what the hardest part of his job is, and he said that it's tedious sometimes because you have to do a lot of small searches. They're looking for each big and small part that goes into the plane. They call each interior part a detail, so having to find a tool for each part is hard. Doing all of that can take a day, a week, a month, and so on. He said a difficult part of his job is driving from his house to work and then back to his home. He said that he drives from Mount Vernon to Muckleteo and back, which is about 80 miles a day. He especially doesn't like it with the price of gas. A big thanks to Matt for representing his company so well. Now, let's travel over to Bellingham, Washington to hear about one local business owner's tasty treats. If you're looking for a small business to support and you want something sweet, go to JoJo's Donuts, a small donut shop and small business that you can help to support in Bellingham, Washington. We interviewed the owner, Joanne, also known as, yes, JoJo. 
Seeing how our job works definitely inspired us, and we hope it inspires you too. So, what does Joanne, the owner, do in her shop? Generally, she runs the shop, orders ingredients, does customer service, makes coffee, cleans the donut case, makes the shopping list, shops, and puts an input into the donuts. For example, she gives her input to her employees for how she wants donuts to look. Overall, she does a little bit of everything. Next, we asked what she loves most about her career. She said, interacting with the community and trying to build it. That also includes the homeless people and people in general. Trying to make a small community and really getting to know people and learning about other people is what she loves. Making friends and seeing other people come together just makes her happy. We also asked, why do you think your job is important? And the people that come in and talk to them, answer questions that they might have or anything, because we do um, gluten intolerant friendly. So if somebody's gluten free or has celiac disease or has any of those things, I can talk to them about our donuts and what's in them and everything so that if they have any allergies and stuff, I can make sure that they're not eating something they shouldn't. Joanne's shop is equitable for all people. All of her sugar is vegan and all of her flour is vegan, so all people can enjoy her delicious donuts. And most donuts are gluten-free at JoJo's Donuts. JoJo's Donuts is a small business where anybody is welcome and so is your appetite. And now, let's cruise over to SeaTac to find out about a crucial transportation element that happens in this city. The Seattle-Tacoma International Airport, known as SeaTac, is the main commercial airport serving the Seattle metropolitan area in Washington State. It's the major transportation hub that plays a vital role in connecting citizens of Washington State to the world. The airport serves millions of passengers each year, providing essential travel and cargo services to destinations around the globe. As a major economic engine for the state, Seattle-Tacoma International Airport supports thousands of jobs and generates billions of dollars in economic activity each year. In this segment, we interviewed the Senior Manager of Media Relations, Perry Cooper, to find out all that we could about this popular airport. Perry Cooper is the first contact for all of the media. He talks with the media about multiple things, including aircraft incidents, issues at the airport, and several projects, including clearing the snow during winter. He's also talking about the many projects they're working on, like the new expansions projects and the new international arrival facility. Next, we asked Perry what he loves most about what he does. What I really like here is that we are really a city in ourselves here at the SEA airport. We, we've got everything from finance people to operations people to security, police, firefighters. We've got all those that come together that then help become the basis and the basically the operators of what's used for all those people that are going on vacation or going on leisure trips because we're helping all those airlines that come in with their aircraft rather than helping people like yourselves that maybe go on vacation somewhere or people um, like uh, folks that are going off to business trips so it's really a variety of things that go on here every day uh, one day i can be speaking about what's going on in a snowstorm here from a couple of weeks ago Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about, uh, we've got a media event about uh, anti-human trafficking to talk about how um, folks can spot uh, potential human trafficking going on. So there's just a wide variety of things that are going on here at the airport all the time. It's, it's hard to get bored. Something that most people don't know about Perry's job is the amount of time he has to view everything that goes on around there. He gets to wander around and see everything that's happening. Some days he can meet a bunch of photographers, and he gets to see all of the aircraft in the middle of the airfield or even the runway. He watches aircraft land and take off, takes pictures of all the things that are happening, and he also gets to communicate with other airlines from all around the world. Perry considers the SeaTac airport to be really important for Washington State. He says that the airport serves up to 50 million passengers a year. Along with that, they have more than 20,000 jobs that are direct jobs for the airport. Those jobs actually bring a total economic value of $22 billion to Washington State. It's about all of the good services that are coming in on aircrafts. The planes that Amazon or Microsoft or other companies and businesses that sell or make items, they bring their products onto an aircraft and they sell them all around the world. And this makes money and creates jobs for the entire region. We would like to thank Perry Cooper for taking the time out of his day to let us interview him and make this segment a reality. And now, let's get digital and learn about a business founded by Bill Gates and Paul Allen.
The Microsoft Corporation is an American technology company that was founded in 1975. Microsoft has a focus on producing consumer electronics, personal computers, and computer software. In order to learn more about this company, we spoke with a software engineer named Ashwin. Ashwin is a software engineer for the Microsoft Corporation and he works with the online store at Microsoft. As a software engineer, he works in supply chain organization, developing software applications and the capability to enable order intake and fulfillment for their hardware devices and cloud data centers. On a daily basis, he works with program managers who directly work with various suppliers and retailers to understand their pain points and implement solutions to improve their experience as well as efficiency in doing business with Microsoft. Ashwin stated that Microsoft is still in the learning phase when it comes to supply chains. They're not as experienced as Amazon or Walmart in this sense. Ashwin says that he loves how every day he comes to work, and it's a new challenge, and it's a new day to learn. It's his goal to make sure that every customer comes in, can buy what they need, and feel happy with their purchase and service. As to why Ashwin feels his job is important to the state of Washington, here's what he has to say. So we are sort of contributing to the wider community to make sure that we kind of generate revenue and there are people who get the better experience. So in, maybe not directly to the state of Washington, but indirectly we are making sure that, that we bring in revenue for the Washington state. Big change since COVID is that many Microsoft employees now work from home. Before they were in offices, but now a lot of them are working at home. In his job, he has to keep continuously learning. You can never say that you know it all. There's always something new happening in the world of technology these days. Finally, Ashwin says that he loves working in Washington State because of the greenery, the landscape, and the people. There are so many good places to hike and be in the great outdoors. We love Ashwin's take on the beauty of Washington State. And if you ever get a bumper bruise out hiking somewhere, rest assured that our next guest will know exactly how to help you. Doctors play a crucial role in providing medical care to the citizens of Washington State. These highly skilled professionals work hard to diagnose and treat a wide range of illnesses and injuries, from minor ailments to life-threatening diseases. They are trained to manage complex medical conditions, perform surgeries, and provide preventative care and health education. In the upcoming segment of Working in Washington, we interviewed internist Mindy Mantooth, a doctor at Skagit Regional Health in Mount Vernon, Washington. First, we asked what she does in her job. Dr. Mantooth said that she helps diagnose illnesses, and then she gives her patients medication to help them feel better for things like sicknesses. She sees patients when their hearts aren't doing well or for things like pneumonia. For this next question, we asked what she loves the most about her job. I love seeing patients. Um, I love seeing my patients that, um, that I know well, and I love meeting new people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really awesome that I get to help people through sometimes a hard time in their life. That's really rewarding for me. One thing that Dr. Mantooth says most people in the state of Washington might not know about her job is that doctors spend most of their time taking notes and signing paperwork. Unfortunately, it's a necessary part of the job. Next, we asked why she considers her job to be important. Yeah, I think health is really important to everyone, being healthy and feeling good. And so I think, you know, it's important for people in Washington to feel healthy it's important for people everywhere to feel healthy, and if we can help people do that, I think that's important. Dr. Mantooth and all the medical folks in Washington State play a critical role in helping us heal and keeping us safe. We thank them for their service to us. And now, let's head back over to Seattle, where anyone can definitely hear the crowd roaring. The Seattle Mariners are Washington State's professional baseball team. They were first founded in 1977, and they are a group of some of the most talented baseball players in the U.S. From their iconic stadium, T-Mobile Park, to their roster of talented players, the Mariners are a beloved institution in the world of sports. To learn more, we interviewed Robert Scheidegger. He supervises all the health and performance staff that work most notably with the Mariners, but also with many other minor league teams across North America. Mr. Scheidegger works behind the scenes. Most Washingtonians might not know that there are so many people working with the Mariner players to keep them fit and healthy and helping them perform their best on a daily basis. There are nearly 40 people offering the Mariner players that kind of support so that you can go and watch them play baseball at the baseball stadium. We asked Robert what an average day looks like at his job. He said that his day starts around 12 o'clock p.m. and he makes sure that all the baseball players are feeling healthy and strong. He helps them warm up for the day and get ready for exercising. Then it's time for the game. 
If a player gets injured during a baseball game, Mr. Scheidegger and his team are responsible for helping that player get better. After the game, he stays on until about 11 o'clock p.m. in case a player wants to do recovery exercises or needs help with an injury they may have gotten during the game. Next, we asked him why he considers his job to be important for the state of Washington. Well, I think that um, the team itself, you know, professional sports teams provide a sense of community for our state and even for our region. So specifically to the state of Washington, I think that 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 sense of community and camaraderie that professional sports teams in the area provide is really important. It helps build a sense of community. Um, I know that when our team's doing well, it makes a lot of people feel good. It also gives them things to do and traditions that they can build, like bringing their family and spending time together watching our team play. And so I think those things are really important for community. There's a lot of evidence too that baseball and professional sports teams like football, hockey, basketball help our economy. So um, when we have games going on, people come into this area, into the Seattle area, and they actually will stay in hotels, they'll go out to restaurants, and they'll do tourist things. And so it's good for the state of Washington to have people coming in from out of state to go watch. For example, this year, the Seattle Mariners, my team are hosting the All-Star Game, the, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. And obviously that's going to bring the best players in the world, best baseball players in the world into the city of Seattle. And so we're going to bring a whole bunch of tourism and um, financial impact is going to increase in our area because people are going to want to come visit and watch those games. For Robert, his job can sometimes be difficult, like balancing a lot of different situations. There can be a lot of bumps and bruises when playing sports. It can be difficult to have to help a player decide whether they want to play through their injury or if they need to skip the game. One thing about baseball is that there aren't that many horrific injuries, but a baseball can sometimes hit players in the head, which could possibly cause a concussion or worse, but thankfully, the Mariners don't usually get hurt. Mr. Scheidegger said that the most exciting part of his job is just the entire experience of the game and being able to come to the ballpark all the time and watch our amazing team play. As you can see, Robert plays a very important role in the Mariners' success and health, and he was very generous to allow us to interview him. Now, we'll move on to a beautiful university in Washington State that helps students thrive every day. The University of Washington was founded in 1861, and it's one of the oldest universities on the West Coast. Also, the University of Washington has 500 buildings and it has 26 libraries too. People come to this university to learn more about art, Asian languages and literature, microbiology, history, and more. This group interviewed a historian at the University of Washington, and her name is Bridget Farley. Bridget loves teaching history because through her job, she has a lot of personal freedom. She mostly decides what she wants to teach and how she wants to teach it. She teaches her classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it's up to her when she wants to do the preparation. And besides meetings, she has most of the week that's free and she can decide how she wants to spend her time. When asked about some things that most people don't know about her job, Bridget said that they don't have the same schedule like high school, middle school, and elementary. Because um, I have a lot of personal freedom, uh, I, I mostly decide what I want to teach. I mostly decide how I want to teach it. And with this job, you don't have that many hours where you're required to be somewhere. I mean, I have, I have my classes Tuesday and Thursdays, but um, it's up to me when I want to do the preparation. It's up to me, um, you know, when I want to work hard or when I don't want to work hard. I have most of the, most of the week, except if I have meetings, I have free. What, what I try to do in history is show people sort of where we've been as a country and a state um, and a nation, and um, some, of the, some of the pitfalls, some of the things that, that have gone wrong, and some of the things that have gone right, so that um, people can make their world a lot better going forward. Finally, one thing that Bridget told us is that she likes to travel to battlefields and take pictures. It really helps teach her about war. Bridget loves her job and wouldn't trade it for anything. Thank you so much to Bridget Farley for speaking with us about the incredible and amazing work that you do for the University of Washington. The University of Washington feels like a great place to be at. Now, off to Spokane to discuss a hugely important part of what makes all of our cities function the way that they do. The Solid Waste Department of Spokane plays an important role in managing the disposal of solid waste in the city and surrounding areas of Washington State. The department provides services such as curbside collection of garbage, recycling, and yard waste, as well as managing waste disposal sites and promoting waste reduction and composting. 
With a focus on sustainability and community engagement, the Solid Waste Department of Spokane works to ensure that waste is managed in a safe, efficient, and environmentally responsible manner. In this segment, we will explore the vital work of the Solid Waste Department in Spokane and the impact they have on the health and well-being of the citizens of Washington State. For our interview, we spoke with Chris Major, an education coordinator for the City of Spokane Solid Waste Department. To begin, Chris Major gives tours of the City of Spokane Solid Waste Disposal, and it's very cool because it's the only one in Washington. She loves teaching people the importance of making less garbage. She says to be careful on what you produce and try to compost as much as possible. Next, we ask what people might not know about her job. Talk about the waste to energy plants, because most people, they think garbage just automatically goes to a landfill. And about 30 some years ago in the City of Spokane, You know, we live right on top of our drinking water and we had to stop burying our garbage right above, you know, what we what we really need every day. And so a lot of people don't realize even living here that their garbage doesn't go to a landfill. It goes to a place where we burn it and recover energy from it. Finally, we asked if she considers her job to be important for the state of Washington. Uh, Probably for the the same reasons I said earlier, I think trash is becoming more and more of a environmental impact. I mean, it impacts our climate, um, how things are changing. Uh, We spend a lot of money dealing with garbage um, and the packaging that the things that we buy come in. And I think just being able to change people's behavior of how they shop or how they look at Um, consumerism. Thank you so much to Chris Major for speaking with us about the incredible and amazing work that you and your team do for the state. Final fun fact, some of their garbage comes from the South Pole. And now, on to those who have a massively important job in our state because they help some of our best friends. Veterinarians play a critical role in ensuring the health and well-being of animals in Washington State. From caring for beloved pets to protecting livestock and wildlife, Veterinarians are an essential part of the state's agricultural and animal welfare systems. These highly trained professionals are responsible for diagnosing and treating a wide range of animal health issues, from routine checkups and vaccinations to emergency surgeries and disease outbreaks. In this segment, we will speak with Paul Schwab from Puget Sound Veterinary Clinic to ask him a few questions. The Puget Sound Veterinary Group was originally formed in 2006 as a large animal practice and they work on animals like llamas, alpacas, camels, sheep, goats, cows, dogs, cats, and pigs. To begin, we asked Paul, what do you do at your job? He said that he is a large animal doctor, so he works on cows, goats, and even chickens. Sometimes he checks on healthy animals, and sometimes he helps sick animals too. Obviously, anytime we're able to help an animal that's that's sick or suffering or trying to have a baby, any of those kind of things, uh, that's that's the rewarding part of the job. We were curious about what Paul loves the most about his job. He said that he loves to help the animals and the people too by keeping the animals healthy. They make sure animals are healthy so the animals can provide food products for us like milk, eggs, and meat, and make sure that the animals are healthy so that the farmers can make the money they need off of the animals. Next, we asked him, what are some things that people in the state might not know about your job? Especially for a large animal, for do it for the cows and sheep and goats and stuff, uh, we're the only vets in Skagit and Snohomish now that are doing much cow work. And so, yeah, it used to be a whole bunch of vets everywhere that, that helped, but there's, there's less, uh, less farm animals around and less veterinarians. Finally, we asked how is this job important to the state? And he said that because so many people have pets, it's important that we have veterinarians around the world to help take care of them so that they get their vaccinations and are healthy. They have to make sure that diseases from some animals don't go to other animals or people. So they monitor farm animals for diseases that can spread quickly. Without vets, we would have such a hard time helping our little friends. So thanks to all the vets and helpers who do what they can for them. Now, if you're feeling musical, this next segment is for you. Handpan makers are a small community of artisans in Washington State who create unique and beautiful musical instruments known as handpans. These instruments, which are really a cross between a steel drum and a UFO, have gained popularity in recent years for their hauntingly beautiful sound and versatility in a variety of musical genres. Handpan makers in Washington State are known for their craftsmanship and creativity. 
using specialized tools and techniques to create instruments that are both visually stunning and acoustically impressive. In this segment, we will interview Patrick Vershore, a handpan maker at Elysian Instruments in Mount Vernon, Washington. The first question is, what is a handpan? Is it a hand plus a pan? No, it's just one word, a hand pan, which is a type of instrument that sounds very nice. The current background music is actually from a hand pan. Patrick says that selling someone a hand pan and seeing that they really like it is the thing that he loves the most about his job. And one thing most people don't know about his job is that he is the only person who makes hand pans in Washington state. Another thing is that hand pans are only about 22 years old. Here's what Patrick said about why he feels his job is important to the state of Washington. Well, I think it brings people out of joy and um, like, I'm bringing more awareness to this instrument because most people don't know what this is. Patrick also tells us that his job is a passion of his, but not a passion project, because it is his main source of income. He also said his job is hard because he's self-taught and it's a little physically demanding. It's really hard. Um, but I think a big part of that is I didn't have anyone to teach me. So I just learned it, everything from the internet and from, from books. Finally, Patrick tells us that 21 is the biggest number of notes he has ever put on a handpan, which is very impressive for an instrument that can fit in your lap. Thanks to Patrick for allowing us to interview him. If you would like to order a handpan from his website, you can go to the website link below. And now onto our final segment that ends with a wonderful business from Seattle. Ceramicists in Washington State are artists who specialize in creating beautiful and functional objects from clay. From plates and bowls to vases and sculptures, ceramicists bring their unique vision and creativity to their work, producing objects that are both practical and aesthetically pleasing. Yutang Ceramics is a Seattle-based shared ceramic studio and art gallery. It provides group and or private classes, workshops, and rented artist spaces. For our interview, we spoke with the owner of the ceramic studio, Curtis Yu. The first question we asked was, what do you, Curtis, the owner, do in your job? Well, simply, Curtis makes pottery. He makes things such as teacups, cups, bowls, plates, vases, and ramen bowls. He also teaches all ages how to make pottery and how to throw on the wheel. We also asked, what do you love the most about your job? Well, I love that I have a place for people to come and make art. And I love making art, and I love sharing art, and I love teaching art, and if I can have a space where other people can do that too, that makes me really happy. And uh, it makes me really happy when people can make something and have an idea of what they want to make and then go out and make it. Another question we asked was, what are some things people in the state of Washington might not know about your job? Curtis says some people might not know how many aspects there are to his job. He has to be a business owner, a maker, a teacher, and he also has to pay taxes and answer emails. The next question we asked was why he considers his job to be important. He considers his job to be important because he thinks everybody needs art. He thinks everyone should be able to be creative and express themselves, and art is a great way to do that. Curtis also provides a space in his community where all of his programs are accessible regardless of how much money you have, what your race is, and regardless of what your background is. Regarding how many days he usually works, Curtis says it really depends on how busy his studio is and what needs to get done. Some days he'll work 10 hours, some days he'll work 8 hours, and some days he'll work 6 hours. Within his job, he says it can be difficult sometimes because he is a small business owner and he has to do all the things. Curtis says he loves challenges and he loves to learn. And to end us off, Curtis shared some words of wisdom with us. I think if you love what you do, and you do what you love, sometimes it's going to be hard. But you keep doing it because you love doing it, right? So if you want any advice, do what you love to do in your life and don't worry about making money. It will come because you love what you do and people will see that and want to support you doing that. Washington State is a place where dreams can become a reality. From the stunning scenery to the diverse range of industries, this state offers a unique blend of natural beauty and economic opportunity. Whether you're a tech wizard, an artist, or a farmer, there's a place for you in Washington. And beyond the job market, Washington is a place where people can truly thrive. 
From the vibrant culture and the bustling cities to the peaceful rural communities, this day offers a little something for everyone. So if you're looking for a place to build a career, a place to call home, or simply a place to explore, consider Washington State. With its endless possibilities and boundless potential, it's a place where truly anything is possible.